Hi, this is a video that kind of introdu introduces um, chemical reactions and also balancing chemical equations. So the first thing, um, there was a lab that we should have done, but we didn't have our goggles at the beginning of the um, term, and it was where we could see um, different signs that a chemical change has occurred. But we will do a lab um, where we get to see most of these changes um, this week. So chemical um, reaction is just the process where you chemically change something into a new substance with different um, chemical composition and different properties. Uh, a chemical equation is just the shorthand notation of showing that. So some symbols, um, this is from your textbook. Um, I think you probably know some of this, but you know, so the arrow to the right means yields, makes, produces, um, S is for the fact that you would have a solid. Sometimes we use a down arrow too, just to show that we formed a solid, which would be a precipitate, which would fall to the bottom of like a test tube or a beaker. This is L for liquid, which is different than aqueous. Aqueous means it's dissolved in water. Um, gas, we can use either one of these terms for gas. Um, G or the up arrow kind of shows that it would have bubbled away. Heat, we can use triangle, um, and then pressure, we could write the actual pressure used um, above the arrow. One other one is sometimes we would use a catalyst and they would give you, like if it were platinum, for example, the platinum catalyst would be written above the arrow. So here's the first thing, just being able to take a word equation and write it as a chemical equation. So here we have solid iron. We're going to put a little S, reacts with, <clears throat> sorry, oxygen gas. And we do want to remember the Brinkelhoff rule. If you remember that from a previous video, that we are going to be diatomic, all of these, when they're by themselves. So oxygen is going to be O2. And then produce, I'm going to use my arrow, and then iron 3 oxide means, there's my thinking bubble. This is plus 3, oxygen's minus 2. So it's going to be Fe2O3, and it's a solid, and this was a gas. Um, we're going to get into balancing later. I will balance it for you just quickly and probably bring back some memories. Um, so we uh, have three oxygens and two, so we would want to end up with six oxygens on both sides. This goes through, becomes six, and then we have four irons. We would want a four here. We'll go over balancing in much more details coming up. Um, here's another uh, going from the word to a chemical equation. So we have so sodium bicarbonate. This is negative one plus one. So I'm balancing charge, writing the formula correctly. It's a solid. Reacts with hydrochloric. So it's an acid. And it means that it doesn't have a uh, polyatomic ion, so it's just chloride, and they're balanced already, so it's going to be HCl, and it's aqueous, they're telling me here, to produce sodium chloride. Sodium's plus one, chloride's negative one, and it's aqueous, plus carbon dioxide gas, plus water, and we know that water at room temperature is a liquid, so we'd want to put L. I'm going to keep going. Um, so now we can go the other direction too. So we could say have the chemical equation, but now write it as a word equation. So I would say something like um, solid calcium carbonate reacts to form or produce, make calcium oxide, I should have said solid, and carbon dioxide gas. So you should be able to go back and forth between the word to the chemical equation, the chemical equation back to the word. So balancing equations, you've done this in the past um, in ninth grade. Why do we do it? Um, the reason that we do it is the law of conservation of mass. We can't create or destroy atoms, um, so they just simply rearrange. We break bonds, we form new bonds, and that is why we balance them. And you're going to see 
um, that you didn't learn in ninth grade that we're balancing them also because we're going to um, be doing calculations where it's important that we have it balanced so we know how many moles we have so that we can get um, a good calculation. So first thing you have to be able to do is to be able to count the atoms. So if I have, I'll make this a little bigger, like a coefficient and then I have a compound. And let's say um, I, well, when I'm balancing, I do need to be able to count all of these atoms up. So what I do is I distribute the coefficient out to everything, and then any um, subscripts with the polyatomic ion get distributed inward. So I would have eight aluminums. Chromium, I would have one times three three here, but then times four is 12. And then oxygen, I would have 21 here times four, which is 84. So balancing equation, um, you will find some of these are very easy and then some are a little bit tougher. Um, so you typically don't want to start with hydrogen or oxygen or anything else that's present in more than one compound. We do, when we're done balancing, have to have the lowest whole number coefficients, those numbers written in front. Um, uh, you don't have to write the coefficient one. Polyatomic ions, um, when you're balancing, as long as you see it on both sides, keep it together as one, and I'll show you that. You can use fractions in front of diatomic molecules. And water, sometimes it's helpful to write water as HOH, and I'll show you an example of that. So here's one example of balancing. I'm going to show you one method. So one method I use is this um, kind of a T table for reactants being on the left. These are our reactants. And then products are produced over here. So what I do is I list what I'm balancing. So I'm balancing chromium. I'm going to keep sulfate, that polyatomic ion, together, aluminum, and I'm going to keep phosphate together. So when I count over here, I have one chromium. On the right, I have three. Sulfate, I have one. You can imagine that there was a parenthesis in a one. We don't need it. Over here, we have three sulfates. Aluminum, I have one. Over here, I have two. Phosphate, I have one right here. Over here, I have two. So I want to make these equal. Um, and you can start wherever you want. So I'm going to start just with the one on the top. I'm going to start with the chromium. I want to have three chromiums on the left. So the only way I can balance is to change the coefficients in front. You don't want to go in and change the chemical formulas because those are there because of balancing charge. So when I put the three there, I balanced my chromium, and I also multiply this through. I also change my sulfate to three. So now I'm going to do, these are equal for now. We'll see if they stay that way. That's why we want to use a pencil with an eraser. Um, sometimes they're equal, and then we rebalance something else, and they become unequal. Uh, so here's aluminum. We have two over here on the product side. We want to have two here, so we would put a two. And when I do that, I also then produce two phosphates. So that was a good deal, and it worked out pretty easy. Here's another one. Um, so now I'm going to show you a different way to balance. Um, let me move my video over here. Um, so another thing, um, you know, you can do these in your head. Um, if you're visual, you might want to... Um, do some coloring. So I've got OH and I, I have, let's say I've got magnesium. So I've also have magnesium over here. I'm going to get to that OH in a second. I've got chlorine and chlorine. And then I have the hydrogen and the OH and I have hydrogen and OH here. So one thing, one of the recommendations for balancing is when you have um, an OH on one side and water on the other, 
It can be helpful to rewrite your water as HOH. So then I would be balancing this OH with this OH and this hydrogen with this hydrogen. So I'm going to just count above this time. So I have one magnesium, two hydroxides, one hydrogen, and one chlorine on the reacted side. On the product side, I have one magnesium, two chlorines, one just hydrogen, and one hydroxide. So you can see like here, I've got two hydroxides and only one over here. So I'm going to start by putting a two here. Remember, I can only change those coefficients, the numbers in front. When I did that, I now have two OHs, but I also have two hydrogens. So now I'm going to go back and try to fix this hydrogen. I'm going to put a two in front which would change this to two hydrogens, and it also changes this to two chlorines. Then you can check, are they balanced? And the answer is yes. Uh, here's another example. This one I'm going to do the highlighting again. So I have nitrate. Um, I have silver. And I have um, copper. So I'm going to do the, uh, I'll do the T chart this time. R and P, reactants products. I have silver, nitrate, and copper. You don't have to show your work. Eventually you get to the point where you won't need this so much. But some of you I know are really visual and you might want to use this a lot. Okay, so this is me counting how many of each are on both sides. So you can see that the nitrate is unbalanced. I want to have two, so I have to put a two here. Um, that also changed my silver to two. So then I have to go back and put a two here, and then I'm done. Um, balancing combustion reactions. So combustion reactions are always going to be um, some kind of a hydrocarbon, so it'll be carbon, hydrogen. Sometimes there's oxygen in it, sometimes not. Plus oxygen makes CO2 and water. So these three things are constant. Sometimes these are, are tricky to balance. And what I recommend is that you balance them in the order of what I say, CHO. If you balance them, first carbon, then hydrogen, then oxygen, and then sometimes you do need to use a fraction. So let me show you. So if I were to um, do this above right now, so I have three carbons, six hydrogens, two oxygens. Oops, there's an arrow. One carbon, two oxygens here, and one, and two hydrogens. So I'm going to balance the carbon first. So I have three on the left of the reactant side. So I'm going to put a three here which gives me three carbons, and, and this would give me six oxygens right here. So I'm not going to try to do anything with the oxygens yet. Next, I'm going to go to hydrogen. So I have six on the reactant side. I want to have six over here, so I would put a three. So now I have six, but I also have three oxygens. So the next one, now it's sometimes tricky and sometimes not. My oxygen, I have six and three. So I have nine total oxygens, and over here I have two. So this is the case where when you have an odd number of oxygens, you can use the fraction nine halves. Or um, if you don't like the nine halves, you can then double all of the coefficients. So you can either leave it like this, or you can take this, you know, there's a number one there already, so you'd multiply that by two. We would just double everything. Nine halves would become nine. The three would become a six. I know it's getting a little messy. And then this three would also become a six. So you can use a fraction in front of a diatomic molecule, and you'll see that when you do these combustion reactions, if you balance them in this order, CHO, if you get an odd number of oxygens on the product side, that's when you're going to want to use the fraction.